Welcome. Let's start with a short question. Do you like working from home? Is it something that for you is weird, awkward, not efficient, makes you feel lonely? Then definitely continue listening. On the other hand, if you enjoy working from home and if you realize that for you it does a lot of positive things, also a lot of interesting things to come, but in whichever of the two camps you are, or even if you're in between, you will have to realize that working from home has a lot of advantages. It will give you back a lot of time, time that you can use for yourself, for your employer, for your family. And maybe it is just about the lower cost that you have for clothing, for transport, or maybe you're most excited about the lower foot, the carbon footprint that you have, because less transport means less pressure on the environment. There are definitely a lot of positive things in working from home, but it will only be a success if it's a success for yourself and for your employer. And so that is what is this presentation about, how to make it a success for you, for your employer, for the team, and for everyone. So where to start? Probably the best thing is to realize that whatever you have been doing at work, the most efficient thing you could have been doing was working into a strong team. And working from home, that is probably the same thing where you have to start. You will want to create a strong team. It might look slightly different, but in the end, the importance is that if you're part of an efficient team, then your results and the results of the team will be there and it is a success, whether it's from home or not from home. You see, a team that is efficient is in the first place a team that is focused on results. And that is the top of the pyramid. Now a team will only be focused on results if it is not diverted towards burying grudges, covering yourself, these kind of things. That will only work if people really feel accountable for the actions that they have committed to take. People will only be able to commit to things once they have been able to express their opinion, isn't it? If you weren't able to express your opinion in the first place, then how can you feel committed to whatever you're supposed to do? The thing is that to bring your opinion into a meeting, there has to be a certain trust, trust from yourself that other colleagues won't see your new opinion of, or your only opinion as something that is just disturbing whatever nice harmony they had in the team. Trust from the team towards you that the reason why you do that is because you genuinely care about the team and not that you just try to boycott persons, ideas, or the team itself. So it all starts with trust. Once you have the trust in the team, then it's rather straightforward to come to those passionate discussions in which people are allowed to have a conflict about an issue so people can speak up, people will feel committed, people can take accountability, and the team will be focused on the results. So not surprisingly, working from home, it's also at the building trust that you have to start in order to build a strong team. One of the first things to realize is when you think about people that you trust, this is probably the people that you have known for a long time people that you have spent time with, people that you met in the early days during the school, for example. Those people aren't innately better or more trustworthy than people that went to school with somebody else. But you will naturally trust them, isn't it? That is something that is very fundamental for us humans, that we trust people that we know and that we see very often. So the first simple trick is keep your camera on whenever it is possible. That will already help. Second thing is people tend to trust people that share something personal. When you share something personal with a colleague, that person will 
normally, naturally, reciprocate and also share something personal. And then you have that secret personal information from each other, which you, of course, will keep confidential, which means that, again, you have been working on trust. Small talk is important. It's not easy for everyone, but it is important. And the simple things about the kids, the garden, the weather, all those things help to build that relationship. It is not because you're on a VC and everything is virtual that you have to stop doing those things. It is, of course, essential that you are genuine, that you genuinely are interested in what is important for the other person, what's keeping the other person busy, why the other person is concerned. Those things are impossible to fake. So that is really very important. And basically use opportunities. There will be opportunities before a meeting really starts, at the end of the meeting, or even have a specific meeting with no specific agenda, just to share things that are on your mind and check on your colleagues how they are doing. Feedback is always important. Feedback also helps to build trust and does a lot more positive things. And in a virtual environment, there are so much less clues that a person will have to see what his or her words do with you. So providing feedback is even more important in a virtual world than it is in a physical world. So definitely do provide that feedback. And once you have that trust environment, then share your opinion. Be passionate about your opinion. Defend your opinion. But if the team goes somewhere else, you also should be ready to disagree and commit and move on forward. So this is really great. But it's not sufficient, of course, to make a team work efficiently, especially working from home or working with virtual teams. You will have to be a little bit more careful for certain things. None of those things are unimportant in the real physical world. And all of those things are also important in, in the real physical world. For example, make sure that you understand what you commit to. Make sure that you know how to do it. Make sure that you have the tools, whatever those tools are. Is it knowledge, contacts, systems, tools? That is always important. But when you're at the office, it's slightly easier because you can just go to the person next to you and say, hey, I'm stuck. Please help me out. In a virtual environment, you have to do a little bit more effort to get to that person, find time in his or her agenda, schedule an appointment, open the VC, and state your problem. It won't just happen that you can say, hey, so we grab a coffee and explain your problem. You will have to do a little bit effort for that. So actually, the best thing is to anticipate and try to make sure that before you commit to something that you really understand what it is that you're going to do. So be very clear about what you can, what you can't do. That is probably the most important thing when you work from home. Never, ever get stuck. Try to be thoughtful about that. Try to anticipate when you're going to be stuck next day or next week and already try to solve the roadblocks now. Those things are always important. Even when you get back to the office, that will continue to be important. But if you want to be efficient at work, that is the place to start. Of course, efficiency as such is not enough. It has also to be effective. And again, just as at work, just as working from home, there are a few things that are important. And here are a few things that actually stand out that when you're at work and you're sitting in a meeting and all around the same table, well, then you will not open your phone, look at your social media. That is something that you won't do, isn't it? That is something that naturally won't happen. The thing is that when you're using a VC, it is actually impossible for other people to realize what you were doing. You can actually hold the thing below the camera and you could, this thing could distract you. Not to say that other things like people, especially kids or books or thoughts can't distract you anyhow. It is just that when you're working from home, 
there is less social control about what is distracting you. So you will need a little bit more self-discipline. Your time is valuable. Time is actually the only resource that you can never go out and buy more of it. Your time is limited, use it well. And when you're at work, try to be 100% at work. And when you're relaxing, focus on that relaxing. It's entirely fine, you deserved it. Other small things that are important is, of course, to be prepared for meetings and actually be a good player in a team. Being efficient in a meeting is a kind of an art. When you, again, when you're all around the same table, it's a little bit easier to hold a current and say, off topic. Let's first come back to this point and solve it first before we move on to something different. That is a little bit more mm -hmm. difficult in a virtual meeting, a little bit more interruptive, I would say. So try to anticipate, do not change the subject before it is clear what the decision or action is going to be. Make sure that there is more clarity around who, who is doing what, by when, and eventually how. And of course, when the, when the decision is made, time to move on to the next point on the agenda. Related to that effectiveness and focusing on work and time separately is also how you organize the whole thing. People are very good in recognizing rituals. In the morning, we wake up, we get ready, we go to the office, we enter the office, we say hello to our colleagues and we start the working day in a different environment. And that helps the mind to focus from resting to work. When you're working from home, that isn't naturally there. So you might want to do a little bit more effort to get there. And that is as well in space as in time. In space, it's important to have your place to work, your workstation. That can be your desk, and that can also be the kitchen table. But then just make it clear for yourself and for the people or animals that share your house that when you're working, when your computer is on the kitchen table, that is a sign that you're busy, that you want to focus on work. Simple, small things like dressing in work clothes. Yes, you can dial the dress code a little bit down when you work from home. That is probably entirely fine and everybody will be okay with that. But change your clothes. That will help you to focus on work and to feel really being at work. And actually always when you want to be effective at work, you have to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, chances are that you won't get there, isn't it? It is always important to have a long-term goal, a medium-term goal, and that will determine what you have to do right now. That is also how you have to approach work when you're working from home. Reflecting about your long-term goals, planning your medium-term targets, and from there on, you will see what the things are important today. You won't be effective at work if you aren't taking care of yourself. You can only be at your best at work if you are physically and mentally healthy. So we already talked about having that workspace and let's, maybe let's start from there. The workspace at home, just as the workspace at work, has to be a workspace that is comfortable to work at. You know the drill, knees, elbows at 90 degrees, back straight, uh, screen of the computer at the, eye, at the height of the eyes, and all those kind of things. Those things are obviously not only important at work, they're also important at home. Thing is, at home, you will have to take care of it yourself. There won't be an HR department that will hold your hand and uh, decide what chair to sit on. You have to do it yourself. Personally, what helped for me is to have a workstation that um, I not only sit comfortable, but it also allows me to stand. So what I have is uh, a small standing desk next to, to my normal workstation. And that small standing desk is basically a small table that I even make myself that is just sitting 
on a regular desk, but it allows me to stand up and work from there if I might want to. And that is kind of important to change position from time to time. Actually, not only changing position is important, it's also important to stretch from time to time and even work out. A few other things are just as important as being, when you're at work, like staying hydrated, drink enough water, and remind, think, remind uh, about the limited social control, meaning that be very careful with substances like alcohol. There is nobody at home that tells you not to put wine in a coffee cup, for example, but don't do it. That isn't serving any purpose, that isn't going anywhere, that isn't helping you. Taking enough breaks, and when you're having the break, focus on something different. Again, it's okay, you deserve your break. Physical health as such won't be sufficient to keep you going. You also need to be mentally strong, mentally healthy. And again, things that we already mentioned, like it is important to focus on work when you're at work and when you are relaxing, it's entirely okay to forget about work. And it's actually good to forget about work and focus on entirely different things. And just as for work, physical health and mental health is also something that we can approach in a reasonably planned way. You can also have your long-term goals, medium-term goals, and short-term goals. For example, for physical health, you could have a long-term goal of getting more fitter, working in a stamina, which means that in the medium term, you will have a certain plan to follow, and every two days, you will have a light workout. That is even more important so for mental health or for mental things. Working from home, working in a virtual team is such a gift of time. You get so much time back. You don't have the commute and all those th things. And that time you can use, of course, for yourself or for your employer. Probably the right thing is to combine uh, the things a little. But when you're thinking about yourself, you can also combine that with your personal development plan. If your plan is to move to a new job, progress your career, maybe move to another country, maybe move to another type of role or another business function, well, in that case, you will have things to learn. It might be computer language, human language, read a certain book. All those things are great. And if you plan them, there is, again, that higher chance of reaching those goals. So make sure that you have time to meditate, think about your life. And I'm not only referring to things like uh, mindfulness, I'm also referring to things like just sit down, reflex, reflect and relax. Make sure that you reflect on where you want to go with your mental health, with your physical health and with your work. And again, no surprise, but you see, making friends is something that comes natural when you're in the office. Nobody goes to the office and doesn't make friends. When you, you go to the office, you meet people, and by meeting people, you will feel the people that you like to hang out with, and you will go together for lunch and all these kind of things. That is something that, in a virtual world, is a little bit more difficult. It is still important to have that social contact. It's still important to be part of the little gossip and all these kind of things. So you might want to reach out to people and sending a small message during the meeting. Did I understand this correctly? Asking for help is an excellent way to get in contact with other people. Reaching out for help is an excellent way also. And especially in this situation where we're all working from home and uh, kids can't go to school, you know that some people will be lonely. You know that some people will have young kids at home and will have a very difficult situation managing both. So reach out, be a friend, be helpful. Another small note about 
the whole concept of this presentation, it always boils down to having long-term goals, medium-term goals, and working on your short-term goals. The thing is that your long-term goals, you can have a lot of them, but your short-term goals or your short-term actions, you can't have too many of those. Actions are fine, but if it's changing character, if it's changing your attitude or if it's changing your habits, that is really very hard. Changing habit is probably one of the most difficult things that you will ever do in your life. So don't overdo it. Try to focus on the few things that you think are the most important. And from all the things that you will want to do today, the most important things are those that will help your medium term goals the best. So hopefully by now you have some ideas of what you want to do or what you want to reflect upon, but try to prioritize. And if it's about changing habits, be very careful, don't overdo it, focus on a few things. And it will be hard, it won't work very soon, so you will need a certain persistence if you really want to achieve something. So to summarize, the concept is that you cannot really exist without your work, mental health, physical health. You are the person that brings those three things together. So three things are always important, physical health, mental health, work. And both situations you can basically approach on, on the way of having a structured plan. Just think about the situation that if you're at sea and you want to sail, for example, from London to Boston, you will have to follow a certain course to get there. If you have that long-term goal, you will know what to do in the medium term. You will look at the current, at the wind and so on, and you will have a course for the day. And every day you will have to adapt your course in function of your long-term objective. That is also so at work, that is also true for your physical health, that is also true for your mental health. So thank you very much and success with it.